Well, hello there. How goes your Thursday evening? Maybe it's Friday morning. You're catching this video. Moon's in Virgo. What does that mean? It means that uh, there's a lot that we can dissect. There's a lot that we can feel into and begin to understand. You know, Neptune moved into its retrograde. And when it comes to outer planets, they go retrograde for four to five months every year. Their movement is already fairly slow. So the impact is felt when they change directions. So right about now. Venus also stationary. So we have Neptune and Venus basically not moving in aspect to one another. So we have this opening, this space, just wide open where you can feel a lot. And because Venus is moving forward after a retrograde, we're, we're, we're trying to get back in touch with that new way of being that's been installed over the last eight weeks or so. And Neptune, really what it's doing is it's bringing us back to reality. Um, sometimes Neptune moving, moving forward can be a bit of rose-colored glasses, um, but really what it is, is just flights of fancy, you know, dreams, wishes, hopes. But right now, both the, the negative dreams, the nightmares, and the positive dreams are being seen as, does this really work? Is this really where we're going? So there's a bit of a reality check uh, and a lot to feel. Um, the biggest thing is, is really grief. There's been a lot of loss recently. Um, in some instances, loss of life but also loss of work, loss of opportunity, uh, loss of connection, you know, intimacy. And not to make a really sad video, but uh, it's a somber kind of experience. And so I roll with the punches. But the Virgo moon today and tomorrow into the following day, the moon's going to take about 51 to 53 hours. I forget the exact to get through a sign. Um, so where we are right now is we're in this place where we can assess our habits. We can assess the depth of our psychology, in my opinion, but I'm an eighth house son. I don't know what you're into, but we have the ability to shift patterns. We have the ability to build something new, um, not only socially, uh, but psychologically. But what do we value right now? If we want to change the ills of the world, you can't just go out your door and do it. It's, it's too deep right now. Jupiter and Pluto are coming together in four days for their second of three conjunctions over this time period, which is transforming human consciousness and human life on Earth. So we have to take a step back from that sometimes because you can't go full force into that all the time. You, you can't you know, protest everything all the time. You don't stand for anything uh, other than destruction. Uh, but it's important to hold these values. So we see how our values have been re reshapen, reshaped. And what we really find is that the things that we want to change are going to take time. So what do you do in the meantime? Uh, there's been a, a bungling of the handling of our country for obvious reasons. Uh, not political on my part. It's just... That's just life. It's pretty obvious. The rest of the world sees it. So we're kind of stuck in this netherworld. Um, and I mean, every moment is a gift. Every moment has its inherent uh, weak points and strong points. Um, but at the end of the day, everything is, is fucking divine. I mean, you're alive. You know, you're in your body. Um, and if any beings are listening who aren't, they love you and they send their support. But... In the meantime, in this downtime, in this, you know, the previous quarantine time, like, what did you do with your time? Uh, it may, may be seen as unproductive or unsocial, antisocial, asocial, but really all it is is focusing on the inner world. And we may have a little bit of fatigue, you know, from all the Zoom calls instead of personal hanging out at a bar or, you know, watching sports if we're accustomed to that. 
but there's just more coming. This is a break. This is an opportunity for all of us to go a little bit deeper, uh, for us to understand where we come from, what we're actually here for. And, and I don't mean here on earth for, I mean in existence. This is a deep time. This is a very deep time. So when you bring yourself to this place of what is going on, just look inside. And right now, off of this solar eclipse, uh, past the lunar eclipse, we have one more eclipse coming. There's not always three, and there will never be four. But the way that this one worked out, we have three. Two lunar, one solar. It's a solar sandwich. So we have more to receive to learn about and this next eclipse will bring in uh, the Saturn moving back into Capricorn which is where it was prior to uh, you know this rash of uh, awakening since about March 21st where everyone's like has to be very aware of what they're doing so we go back to the time a little bit of the anticipatory the can we prepare can we really just hold it down and just kind of chill for a bit instead of trying to move forward? Um, and really all that means is going inward. The growth never stops. It just keeps going. And um, it will keep going on and on and on and on. And with the Virgo moon today, take the opportunity to feel your stuff. Get real with yourself. Get practical. What changes? What small changes can you make to your habits? We don't want to change things wholesale. This is not the time for that. No, make a small change to your diet or to your daily habits. Um, I started doing more list writing during this time. It's very helpful. Keeps the mind organized. Uh, you can start doing little affirmations for yourself. You know, I I am. A universal light There's nothing wrong with thinking that you really are everything that's in your body is mostly space um, but that is light it's a frequency which we cannot see most of the atom is, is space most of space is space but that's light that is awareness and our attachment to form is making us a little sick and it makes us sick every day and then when we have to let go of it, it sucks. But during a time where there is a forced by, whether it's by a police officer or whether it's by the universe, it's all the same shit. If you can't change it in the moment, you're experiencing it. So a bit of acceptance, a bit of humility, a bit of internal peace is a gift. And this is what we're finding. Um, but I'll tell you, I'll fight it like hell. Say, no, I don't want to feel that. I don't want to be there. And I really have no choice. You know, we all have to sleep at night. We all have to face our inner world. And, and no one is immune uh, from all of this. Everyone feels this. It doesn't matter how much money you have or what position you have. Um, some of the developments that we see in the world, uh, whether it's political fighting or um wars or misinformation this is stemming from individuals just like you and i who are having internal shit going on what's up mike um and then we can't handle it so we fight and we bicker and now for some reason you know this is basic psychology psychology 101 when someone's in a position of power we tend to think that they're like better or like more suited to being alive a more functional human but I gotta tell you that shit just ain't true in fact you can study how someone gets into a specific position whether it be being a doctor or being a senator and some of the things you have to go through in order to get there and it can tell you a little bit about that person and that may make them not that great at dealing with emotions and not that great at being honest or being trustworthy but we're seeing the cost of projecting out what's going on inside onto others at the highest levels of uh, our entire social structure. There's been a great unification, uh, maybe not in the way that we would like to have seen, 
Um, I know some of us who want to see the world moving towards love and unification wouldn't want it to be through uh, the global fight against a pandemic or against uh, authoritarian regimes, but thus it is, and here we are. Um, so the great unification that has occurred and has been forwarded by social media um, also has its downfalls. And when we're unified uh, upon trauma, called trauma bonding, there's a lot of healing to be done. And the trauma isn't, you know, it isn't over. And honestly, it never ends. But the deep time, the darker time is now. It is the dark night of the, the earthly soul. It is the wandering through the deep, dark forest, not knowing if there's a bear behind you or if there's a mountain lion tracking you. You just don't know. And it, it's very real to feel that. And, you know, take the medicines you choose, you know, tap out when you want you know, uh, take, take what you need, but I'm feeling stone sober right now. And I am getting downloads and messages and information about how I am to quote Nako part of the problem. The man really sings to the times, very intuitive son of a person, love him. Uh, but yeah, if you can own your responsibility within something, you become a pillar for building the new earth. And if you cannot own your responsibility, you are a drunk pallbearer at a, at a funeral. You're going to drop the casket, man. It's going to be ugly. We have to own it. We cannot build something new by resenting that which exists. We can learn from the mistakes that were made prior to us. That's called grace. But we can't build anything off of resentment or anger. It, it just simply doesn't work. It will inflate itself. And then it will also deflate, uh, likely at the worst time. And karma is quick these days. I see Molly sharing lightning bolts, zip, 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 like for real. Uh, a minor aspect as it's referred to, there are really no minor aspects in astrology, just misunderstood ones, of a semi-sextile, half a sextile, 30 degrees between Uranus and Chiron. Wrote about it yesterday, I believe. This is a, this is a new age coming in, but not just that a new age of, of healing and a new age of unique individualized expression. When Chiron and Uranus work together, it's it couldn't be more kind of cool. You know, it's a cutting edge. But, you know, cutting edge is sharp and it'll cut your arms off if you're not careful. But it's also new and we don't really know how to use it. You know, you don't hand a kid a weapon. You wait till they're older. You also don't give them highly psychoactive drugs because they need to be a little bit older and figure out how to live first. And we're being handed weapons and, and tools and like, I don't know, toss him a pitchfork, give him a torch. We don't know what the fuck to do with it. This is new shit, all right? And our, our technology is showing that. Um, the discussion over 5G is a great example of that. Like, I would love, like if someone said we could have faster internet, um, virtual reality capabilities, immediate transfer of things. Sure, but wait, aren't there downfalls to that? I mean, we don't know, we haven't studied it. Okay, well, maybe study it first, but see, it's being pushed forward in a way that, I mean, to me, obviously the world's gonna head in that direction. Maybe I wouldn't choose it. You know, do I need technology? I, I mean, I'm doing it right now, I'm using it, but at the base of me, do I need anything other than food, water, shelter, and community? Good question. But, you know, the world is ex is exciting. We're in bodies. We want to do stuff. Let's build shit. Let's build towers. Sure. But these things, they're not tested. So, like, good luck. We'll see what happens. Um, the same thing is true with a, with a possible vaccine of any sort. Now, I'm not just talking about one potentially for this pandemic. Um, these are untested. You don't know what's going to happen. And so what is actually happening with a semi-sextile, Uranus is moving through this area of the chart and clear, be careful, there's a spiky thing over there. And it's clearing the way for Chiron when it comes through in about seven years, that's 2027. So we have this latent period of let's try some shit because the times call for it. Those lightning bolts, things are changing so quickly, we gotta do something, okay? It, it's, it's a very rapidly advancing time. And I totally understand this is also a gateway, Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter. Come on, this doesn't happen very often. And when it has, there have been cataclysmic changes in society.
going all the way back to 500 AD, which is as far back as can be studied. Um, astrologer Rick Levine did an entire 90 minute video on that. It's fascinating. Check it out on YouTube. Um, but the pattern we're in right now, it's a gateway. People leave during this time. I don't ask for anyone to die. You know, what kind of monster would do that? But I understand that death occurs, you know, and there are symbols in astrology where it's like, here's a gate. Maybe some people are going to check out. And my friends, we were in a big one. Okay. But you know what that also means? A lot of shit can leave. A lot of stuff can come out of the closet. You know, what's the book called? Um, really the only truly exciting book in the Bible. It's called <laughs> Coming from a Catholic Raised Kid. Uh, Revelation. It's like things are being revealed. They're being uncovered. Um, and there's some dark shit being uncovered. But, you know, on one end, you got pedophiles. Not cool. Not cool. And on the other side, you have, like, alien technology. I don't know. A lot of beautiful things that can come out. Um, and my, my heart is just being cracked open in these times. And we stay so distracted. And I mean, come on, fuck it. It's fun, right? Crystals, video games, nature. I don't know. Commentary, television, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu. You thought I was done. Um, but when we're not able to be distracted, the same amount of energy is always happening. Okay. We always have this happening, except we're parsed out in 15,000 different places. And then when it comes home to roost, that's a lot of energy to feel in the heart. That's a lot of energy to feel in the belly. All right. You got that cancer energy going on, you know, Leo energy right here. Is this about me? But this Virgo moon and you see me riffing on it right now. Look, describe, understand, feel, look, describe, understand, feel. Um, look, describe, understand, feel, and repeat. And this is what we're capable of at all times, but it's highlighted by the moon's journey. But th there's a lot, there's a feeling. And I share here, okay, because it feels right. And I honestly, I adore you guys. Women, men, doesn't matter non-gender specific. I know that without you, I am like a rock. I'm like a stone. I just sit here. I'll go out to nature. I'll go hiking. I'll be one with nature. But there's nothing. There's no life. There's no excitement. The stars that you see here, you know, it's like, uh, it, it, there, there's me. But without all of this other stuff, there's no nebula. There's no collision. There's no gravity. There's no orbiting. And we're missing a really essential piece of that right now throughout this time of, I mean, call it social distancing, but that's just a trend. It, it really is isolation and separation, okay? And remember, regardless of where all this stuff comes from, when I'm talking and you're listening, let's be objective. Let's hold this space. It, it's just happening. What is our spirit trying to, trying to figure out? What kind of shackles are we trying to break from our inner world and inner sensibility that we have to be pressed down by reality. You know, what have we forgotten? What, what have we not done? Or what have we done too much of? And how can you be kind to yourself? Remember, you can, you can look, you can understand, you can feel, look, understand, feel, assess you can do all of these things your emotions don't have to rule you and the large majority of humanity is is emotionally driven you're like fuck you man like you believe that go to hell it's like all right okay but i see you being different and i know if the tables were turned and i was on the opposite side of the screen and i was like What's this dude's deal? You know, like I could hate on me. The only reason, and then, you know, I did this, done this vegan diet for many years, whatever, never identify with your diet. It's, it's not a healthy habit. 
just eat what you want to eat and, and love yourself and occasionally break the rules because you love yourself that much. But when we try to identify with something, we'll be anti something. The, the moment we ground into an idea, we're saying also the opposite. You know, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That's true with thoughts as well. And I lost my train of thought there a little bit. So I started talking about food. Um, but food is vitally important, as is water. This is Jerry. While I drink some water, say hi to Jerry. And you know, these are kind of tough times, right? A couple of years ago, I had a really tough spell, about three years ago. And I moved to Tucson. I kind of had to. It was like the universe was bringing me here. I had been arrested and whatever. Who cares? Um, that's the past. Love to all those people who were involved. Judge Campbell, I love you. <laughs> um, but I was like, I need some damn plants. And I was like, I'll buy a cactus. And so I got this one. And I put it in a little pot, and I was like, I'll keep it next to me. And I was so sad. Oh, my God, I was so sad. I was just beat. I was a beaten dog. 1982, year of the dog. Um, and <laughs> Jerry, right here, didn't grow at all until this year when I started feeling better and getting out and, like, really processing. So thank you to Jerry. The energy of this time, I see... Liliana asking, this energy will dr either, one, the, the energy of the Virgo moon will drive you insane and have you busy, 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 busy. It will have you indulging in pleasures so then you can feel more deeply, okay? This is, this is why you might want to eat a pint of ice cream or just like indulge. Um, but also there is a heightened level of potential criticism within the Virgo moon. The these the lower aspect is uh, give me pleasure, give me you know more sex, more weed, more everything because I want to feel, I want to be embodied. Okay, Virgo is a very sensual sign, but because of that, it also has this added piece where it's like the you know it's like the the virgin and and the whore as they say, um, where it's like oh but I am so pure and I will be pure, so pure until no one's looking and then you know fuck me harder um <laughs> so within that spectrum there's an understanding that it's like there's a give and a take and every time you do something there's a there's a, a something happens afterwards and over time objectively virgo kind of objective mercury ruled you, you know you might see that Wait, if I do that, hmm, how am I going to feel afterwards? You start measuring. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? And, you know, I try not to play the bubblegum astrologer, but Virgo, it's like, hmm, am I going to, you know, out having a drink, you know, something with fruit juice in it? Am I going to, am I going to have sex with this person? Hmm. And then at some point, boom, you know it. You go for it. You do it. Maybe shower beforehand. Get everything clean. Um, what does that have to do with right now? Size up what you want. Make conscious decisions. But once you decide, you just can go for it. Okay? You let yourself have it. And for me, what I've noticed in the group that I seem to attract around me, you know, we attract the like individuals. Um, maybe it's generational. There's a bit of repression. Uh, you know, I'm not going to let myself have that. Maybe I'll go without that. Uh, you know, maybe I'll fast. Maybe I'll have, just have juice. You know, that sort of thing. Um, so I remind people to lean towards pleasure. Okay. And obviously, we're conscious beings. We're here to pay attention to what we do and where we come from and what happens in our lives. Okay. I, I know how blessed I am. I know how privileged I am. I grew up in Baltimore City. Okay. I was in a very small, uh, very white community in what is mostly an African-American uh City, 67, I looked up the number, 67%, white's like 27%. But I saw how there was a lot of violence, judgment, racism 
you know, going on against the majority of people in the city. And that was rude. Basically, I grow up, I get to observe everything. Um, I kind of just slide through the system, make my way out, go to New York and meet, you know, thousands of people who changed my life. Love you guys. And now I'm here and I have this ability to see what I've been through, see where I've come from. I wasn't by any means rich or anything, but I was, I was rich in opportunity and I've taken advantage of that to have deep soul level experiences and to bond with nature to the best of my ability. Um, and I, I have a Virgo moon. This is, and it, it has a strong impact on my chart. I'm observing, I'm seeing what's going on and I'm studying it. And then I'm making decisions based on that. When my emotions take over, it's usually just because I've been ignoring feeling. And I guess that's the biggest takeaway from right now. If you go through the Virgo moon cycle and you don't take time to feel, and remember that when you exercise, okay, or when you meditate, or when you have sex, or when you pleasure yourself, because that really is sex anyway. It's just you having sex with you, and that's totally cool. I support it. Vote for masturbation. But when you do that, it's a way of feeling. It's a, it's a way of processing things. And don't discount it. Feeling is believing. Um, because when we don't feel, and then we get further away from it, it, it can it can blow up and we might react on people. So that's where I'm standing now. And now I'm going to check in on the astrology chart and just give you just a little insight into the sky right now. The strongest thing that we're feeling in the body is Mars. Okay. What does that mean? Mars is at the end of Pisces. Okay, now the nodes are in Gemini and Sagittarius. So this Mars at the end of Pisces is creating what's called a square um, to both the North Node and the South Node. Um, they're just the nodes of the moon. It's squaring them. This is important because it signals a very clear delineation between what is this side, what is that side, okay? And what are the sides? Gemini North Node is saying, Here's the data. Here's the here's the facts, whatever facts are. Put it all together and make your decision. You know, the information gathering. And then the south node in Sagittarius is saying, here's what we believe. Here's what we're passionate about. Here's 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 what we hope for because it would just be so great. Uh, you know, Sag is like, can can God just save us? Is there is there a savior? There's a savior, right? You know, you know, there's a there's a vaccine. There's there's a political candidate. And then we're looking at it and we're like, I don't think so. And then on the other side, the data is saying this doesn't add up. So with Mars there, we're kind of like carving out our inner belief systems. We're saying, oh, it would be really nice if I could just be like, you know what? I'm going to go on a hiking trip for the next two weeks and forget everything. But then the data, you look at your bank account and you're like, well, fuck. Um, or you look at the weather and here in Tucson, it's like fire coming from the sky. <laughs> like you can't do that. Um, so we're getting realistic super quick. Not only like I talked about at the beginning, Neptune coming into its stationary position, bring us down to earth, but Venus is right there in aspect saying, you feel that? Mm. It's kind of like when you're sleeping at night you know, Neptune, and you're like, wow, that was a good dream. I was floating on a river. And then you wake up and you feel everything and it's really still. And you're like, well, shit, now I'm scared. I was just unconscious in this room and felt no fear. And now I'm awake and it's like, what was that noise? Was that the cat? Or was it the other cat? Or one of the other two cats? Because I know everyone has four cats, right? But there's there's a bit of a scary and eerie feeling. And, you know, anxiety as well that's that uh uranus and chiron feeling but with mars in this position we have overnight is a bit of a testy time but as we get to let me get the exact time oh there it is about 8 a.m there we are so as you wake up tomorrow morning there will be a feeling of a bit of restlessness 
and also looseness to everything. There's a lot of information coming in, and especially while you sleep. It'll be upgrading your cells. You know, say a little prayer before you go to bed. Ask for, uh, you know, your highest good or whatever. You, you got intentions written somewhere? These are my intentions for the day. Just kidding. I, they're in the other room. Just fill in the blanks. But set your intentions and allow your cells to receive that information. Okay? Upgrading your DNA. This is the, this is the end of the preparation for the great spiritual conquest of humanity. This is a grand, I know I just said that, this is a grand time of awakening. We have to choose something. But we don't have to choose what's been prepared for us, you know. Just because you walk in a room and someone's like, I made on this plate some ground horse meat with cumin, and on this one there's some dog food. And it's like, you could just go straight to the kitchen and make your own food. And, and that's actually what I recommend doing. Um, because dog food and horse meat are not a good dinner. So choose your path and remember that this kind of spiritual warrior energy that we've been imbibing in for the last about six weeks now with Mars in Pisces, we're not going to see this shit for a while. Neptune goes to sleep and goes backwards in that same sign, okay? And then Mars moves out of that sign. So it's like Piscean energy, where did you go? Well, Welcome to the damn Aquarian age. We're moving out of the age of Pisces. Mars is going to be in Aries for over six months. This is wild. This doesn't happen very often. It has to do with a retrograde pattern. And yes, I bet everyone's tired of hearing the term retrograde. And I'm tired of typing it. And that's why I always put R slash X. <sighs> well, what we're stepping into is a time where actions speak louder than words, speak louder than intentions, speak louder than anything. And in fact, there is an action that most people don't consider an action. And it is to abstain from taking part in things that are not productive, that are not useful, or that contribute to a shitstorm, if you will. So remember that action. To plead the fifth, to say no is a complete sentence. This is, this is a big time of, of trial that we're going to go through. Okay? And we're prepared for it. We're, we're halfway, you know, Bon Jovi coming through. We're living on a prayer. Whoa, whoa, we're halfway there. We've made it halfway through as of the 29th, which is in four days, of the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction. Okay, there'll be, there'll be years of cleanup from this and reorganization, as you can probably already see. Don't delude yourself. And anyone uh, who's telling you everything's going to be great is just not paying attention. They're spiritually bypassing. Okay, and you're here for a reason. And like... I'm here. You like me? You don't like me? I'm interesting. Everybody is fucking like this, okay? I just happen to have words for it, all right? So get to know people, all right? And you're going to need those same people that you've been shitting on. And speaking to me, I'm speaking to everyone. If you've been crushing someone for their beliefs, you need every one of them. We cannot, the whole point of this situation is we cannot move forward. This isn't about karma. If it was about karma, then people being shit on for 400 years would make sense. But it doesn't. It's wrong. Okay? We need equal opportunity. The people who have been the oppressors obviously need to get in check. But they don't need to suffer. We don't need to poop on them and wipe our butts on them. That is not how this works. Because we would just be making more of a mess. Okay? When there's spaghetti, spaghetti, when there's spaghetti spilled on the floor, you don't take a plate of spaghetti and rub it on the floor to clean it up. That would be ridiculous. Plus, it would probably make an Italian grandmother cry. Don't do that. The point being, don't just add more fuel to a fire that sucks. Step away from it and understand how maybe this fire got started and how to keep it from starting in the future. I'm going to leave it at that. Be kind to people wherever you can. And if you can't, just walk away, my friends. Um, thanks. Um, thanks for watching. And thank you for being here. Um, I have a YouTube channel. Just getting started. I'm trying to get 1,000 followers because then I can do live videos there, um, which will also be broadcast here. But it's a little bit better of a format. So I'll post the link. If you can follow me, subscribe to me, that would be cool. And if not, 
it's not personal and I love you. And I might show up at your door and still ask you to do it and I'll bring you a cookie or something. Just kidding. All right, you have a beautiful night and you keep yourself sane and soak up this deeply spiritual energy that's coming through. Talk to your guides, okay? Talk to your crystals and get in touch with it. You are one beating heart. Your heart is an electromagnetic charging pod. Call forth what you want to bring forth into your life. Bless you.